All right, all right. So hello and welcome everyone to our second ever office hours webinar for Brain HQ. We're so glad that you could be here today. My name is Stephanie and I'm a member of our customer delight team and I'm going to be one of your co hosts for today. So our goal for the office hours webinar series is to show off a specific feature or two, and then we will open the floor and answer any questions that you might have about those features. So this is going to be a little bit more relaxed than our brain academy webinars and we are uh, going to be hosting office hours every other month this year. So if you're interested in continuing the series with us, our next office hours will be taking place in May. Keep your eyes peeled for an invitation to that. Now, today's topic is a highly requested one. Uh, we are going to be taking a deep dive into progress in BrainHQ. So I'll go ahead and walk you through the different metrics available in BrainHQ. Henry will be jumping in to help me with some of them. And then we'll pivot to taking questions from the audience. So if at any point you'd like to ask a question about progress, click the Q&A button on the Zoom control panel, and then we'll go ahead and answer as many of those questions as we can. Now, there are a lot more of you in the audience than we expected, which is phenomenal, uh, but we probably won't have the opportunity to answer every single question today. Now, good news is that if your question doesn't get answered, uh, I'm a part of our support team here. And all of our members of our support team would be more than happy to help you out with any follow up questions that you might have. We also have a support site, which you can find at support.brainhq.com. And that's going to have answers to most common questions. And we have a whole section of that site dedicated specifically to understanding your progress. Now, the other thing that I wanted to note is that today's webinar is being recorded and it's going to get posted to our YouTube channel in the coming days. So if you'd like to be notified when this video goes live, be sure to go to youtube.com slash brainhq and you can go ahead and subscribe there in order to receive an email notification. Everyone who is registered for this webinar is also going to receive an email sometime next week with any follow up resources that we may need, including a link to a replay of this video. All right, uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, before working at Posit Science, I was actually a science communicator and docent at a science museum here in San Francisco. Then in 2014, I started working for Posit Science as a customer delight specialist. I wear a few more hats now than I did when I first started eight years ago, but I'm still answering questions from users like you pretty much every day. Now, my co-host today is Dr. Henry Monka. Henry, say hi. Hi, folks. Nice to have all of you join us today. Yeah. So, Henry, you've probably seen in most of our other webinars. Uh, he earned his PhD in neuroscience at the University of California, San Francisco. That's where he studied brain plasticity with our co-founder, Dr. Michael Merzenich, somebody you may have also seen in some of our webinars. Uh, Henry has been CEO of Posit Science since 2011. So, we are going to be tag-teaming uh, you know, different aspects of progress. And then we're also going to be tag teaming any questions about progress that you may have in the live Q&A section. All right. So let me go ahead and pivot to our demonstration window here. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, progress. What does progress mean in the context of Brain HQ? So generally, what we mean is an improvement over time. So you started here, you set some baseline scores, you trained a bunch, and then you improved those scores over time. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can track your progress in BrainHQ, and so we're going to do our best to kind of hit on all of those today. Now, first, you can track your progress on individual exercises using what we call level tiles. So they allow you to quickly see how many levels you've completed per exercise and then how well you've scored across all of those levels. Next, you can track your overall progress using BrainAQ. Brain AQ is short for brain activity quotient. And this is going to be uh, where I'm going to toss it over to Henry so he can talk about the science and design behind brain AQ. Then finally, you can also track your progress using your percentile scores. Now, percentiles aren't going to be for everyone, but we do have a lot of questions pretty frequently about percentiles. So we wanted to take the opportunity to address that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into level tiles. Uh, so you can get a very detailed view of your progress in each exercise by looking at your level tiles. Uh, so I'm currently logged into Henry's account, who has been generous enough to donate his account for the webinar today. And what I'm going to do is navigate to our level selection screen. So the way that I do that is I click on explore all exercises. And here we have a, a list of all 29 of our exercises organized by domain. And all of these exercises are going to be color coded. So for example, all of our people skills exercises are orange, all of our intelligence exercises are purple, attention is green, so on and so forth. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is select target tracker from our attention category. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and skip to our level selection screen. So now here, you're gonna see all of the levels available for Target Tracker. Um, so for those of you that need a refresher uh, on how Target Tracker works, there are going to be a few objects that appear on screen. They start to move around and then additional distractor images will appear. And your task is to keep track of the original objects that had first appeared. So uh, in Target Tracker, uh, excuse me, uh, each of these squares on this page represents a level of target tracker, and each level is a little bit different. Uh, so for example, some of the levels in stage one are going to be uh, levels containing uh, bright, bright blue bubbles on like a dark blue background, and they're going to move kind of slowly. But some of the more advanced levels in sta stage six or stage seven, you're going to have bright pink jellyfish against a picture of a coral reef, and they're going to be cruising around that screen pretty quickly and all the way out to the periphery. So there are lots of different ways that these exercises change and become more challenging over time. Now, from this screen, there are a couple of ways to interpret your progress. So we want to take a look at uh, sort of this breadth and depth approach. So we wanna see that you're opening and completing more levels. And we also wanna see that you are improving your performance over time and getting more stars. Now, one way that you can do this is through our medals feature. Now our medals feature recently just got a revamp. So this is a great opportunity for us to present that to you all today. Now you can see these medals up here at the top of the page. We can see that Henry has earned a gold medal in the first, second, and third stage of Target Tracker, a silver in the fourth, a bronze in the fifth, and has yet to earn medals in the sixth and seventh stages. So let me walk you through what that means. Now gold medals, Mean that you've earned an average of four and a half stars across all levels in a stage. So you're going to have a combination of uh, levels that have four stars and five stars, mostly five stars. So we can see that here in these first three stages because those medals are listed right under the stage numbers. Next, a silver medal means that you've earned an average of three and a half stars uh, across all levels in a stage. So we can see that here in stage four, and we can see that Henry has to earn five more stars to get to his next medal to a gold medal. Now, a bronze medal, if we scroll down to stage five, is going to show you that uh, you've earned a minimum average of two stars across all levels in a stage. So there's even more room for improvement here if Henry's looking for ideas on what to work on next. Now, stage six and seven don't have medals yet, and that's because Henry hasn't completed all of the levels within each of those stages. So we can see here, you need to earn stars in all levels in order to unlock medals to begin with. So you can use these medals to help track your progress. So that includes uh, how many levels you've tried, again, that breadth, and then how high your performance has grown in each level, so that depth. Now, a bronze is gonna be better than no medal, a silver is better than a bronze, and a gold medal is gonna show you the most progress of all. Now, let's talk about how to interpret this data by looking in at uh, one of these graphs. So I'm gonna go up to stage two, and I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit so it's easier for you all to see. So this is our first level of stage two. So at the top, you can see that there are five colored stars here, which means that Henry has earned all five possible stars for this level. So great job, Henry, great marks on that. Um, and now you can also under that see a history of Henry's progress in this little graph. So when Henry first trained with this level, he was able to track three objects, which is its number in black. That's what we call his baseline score. And then over time, he trained and trained and trained and trained until he was able to get a new high score that earned him five stars and he was able to track six objects in target tracker. Now, there are a couple of other patterns that you might see uh, where these graphs go. So for example, if we look at this third level over here, he uh, similarly started with the baseline score. He was able to track three objects and then his top score is six objects, but that's listed here in the middle of this graph. Now, what this means is that uh, at one point during training, Henry got his top score, but then in subsequent replays of that level, he hasn't achieved that top score again. So that can be something that you can use to sort of uh, gauge what exercises you maybe want to return to after a while. Now, the other thing that I want to show is if you've only completed a level a couple of times, rather than a line graph, you're going to get a little bar graph instead. So for example, down here in stage seven, Henry has completed this particular level only three times. And we see that because there's only three bars in this bar graph here. Now, the first time he was able to track three objects, the second time he was tracking more. And then the final time where this green bar is tells us that the final time he was able to track five objects. 
So that's how you can use level tiles to track your progress in a very detailed way on every exercise and every level. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and I'm actually gonna head on over to our progress page where Henry is going to jump in and start talking about Brain AQ. Uh, Henry, feel free to take it away. Super, so thank you for all your kind words about my target tracker training. I see that you have uh, given me uh, my next goals. I really need to work on those last two stages in target tracker and at least get to a bronze medal about it. But uh, thank you for the inspiration. Of course. So, uh, so let's talk about this next measure called Brain AQ. And, and the idea of the Brain AQ measure, you know, Stephanie told you about a way that you can look at your progress in a very detailed way, every exercise, every level. Brain AQ gives you a way to kind of add all that up together and say, okay, well, what's the big picture here? So before I talk about that graph in detail, I wanna to talk to you about a concept that that graph came from. So scientists who are thinking about cognitive function and, um, uh, and brain function over the past 20 years have developed an idea called cognitive reserve. And where that idea comes from is a pretty interesting observation. We've known for a long time now that certain things that people do over the course of their whole life seem to make them more resistant to the onset of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. For example, it's clear now that people who, for example, attain a higher level of education when they're young uh, tend to resist the onset of dementia. It's clear that people who leave a more cognitively active life in their work uh, have the same benefit. Clear that people eat a healthier diet or engage in physical activity all seem to become more resistant to dementia. And so that's led to the idea that, hey, the brain uh, is a bit like... Um, well, let's use the metaphor of a gas tank, right? So there's certain things that we do with our brain that put gas in the tank, like leading a cognitively stimulating life or physical exercise or a good diet. But there are also things that can happen to us that, well, cause the gas to leak out of the tank. So maybe you uh, fell down the stairs and had a concussion. Maybe, unfortunately, you had, um, you know, had cancer, for example, and, uh, and chemotherapeutic treatment. Maybe, um, uh, maybe you're unfortunately socially isolated and you're not in touch with your friends and your family as much. All of those things seem to weaken the brain in that sense, back to our metaphor, cause gas to leak out of the tank. And so what scientists now think is that throughout our life, we need to add to our brain reserve at a rate that's faster than, well, our brain reserve might be leaking out. And um, when those two things uh, are not in balance, when we're leaking more than we're gaining, so to speak, well, that's when we're eventually going to go on to a condition like Alzheimer's and dementia. So the science team at Posit Science took that very well-grounded scientific idea and applied it to Brain HQ. And what we're seeing here is the Brain AQ score. And what that is, it's a measure of, well, how much have you put into your brain, so to speak, through your Brain HQ training? How much have you added to your reserve? So every time you do a level in Brain HQ, every time that you try a new level, every time that you go back to an old level and you work on it again, you earn Brain AQ points. And those points come from a very detailed mathematical brain function. Uh, but for our purposes here, you know, as you do training in the way that Stephanie laid out, as you try new levels, as you go back to old levels and do them again, you're going to earn these brain AQ points. And so as you see in the middle of this, uh, so the bottom part of what Stephanie's showing you is a calendar. On the left, you see SMT, that means Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So each of those columns is a week. And you can see in the middle there, hey, there are a couple of weeks where I did quite a bit of training. You can see by that dark purple scores. And you can see my brain AQ score went up considerably over that period of time. I was putting gas in the tank. I was improving my brain reserve or my cognitive reserve. But then you see there was a period of time where I got a little busy and I didn't train very much. Now, brain AQ points, well, they slowly wear off over time. And that again comes from the science. We all know that if you don't practice a skill, it eventually wears off over time. So we looked at a couple of really big cognitive training studies, and we looked at the data very carefully to see, well, hey, how slowly do the, uh, do the benefits of cognitive training wear off? And we built that into the brain AQ measure. So when you don't train for a little while, as I did, well, those brain AQ points start to wear off. But good news, you can always come back in and train some more and boost them back up again. And you see at the very end there, over the past couple of days, I've been doing a bunch of training. And you can see I've started to push myself back up again. But I'm not really quite where I want to be, right? You can see I'm not back up to my high point yet. 
And that's one of the main other points of this nice summative measure in brain AQ. You can look at it and say, you know what? I've fallen a bit because I haven't been training and I have a new goal. I want to bounce up to back where I was, or in fact, maybe even higher. And that's a reason to come back to brain, AQ each, brain HQ each day. And again, the good news is that however you train, you're going to add to your brain AQ points. You can use the personal trainer where Brain HQ is going to pick out the exercises for you, or you can go back to your favorite exercises or the exercises that your friend Stephanie tells you to do, like Target Tracker, and you can work on going back to some levels to improve your stars, to earn a new medal, or doing some new levels to open them up, and all that will contribute to your Brain AQ score and make it go up. So this is a very nice way. Uh, you know, I guess what I should say is that to track your progress, you want to look at this, and you generally want to see your score going up with training. If you take a break for a little while, well, track your progress by pushing yourself back up to your high point. Those are both good ways to do it. Now, I do want to call out one thing about Brain EQ that can catch people by surprise a little bit. So when you start each day, you've typically lost some Brain EQ points. And sometimes people ask us, hey, why is that? I haven't even done my training yet. Well, that's exactly why you've lost a few Brain EQ points. Like I said, they wear off over time. So when you start off, there will be negative. And um, if you only do a little bit of training, the training you today, you, that you do today might not fully make up for the training that is starting to wear off. So you might do a level or two or three and come check your brain AQ score and see, oh, wow, it's still negative. Why is it negative? Because I trained today. Well, the answer is that some of the benefits of your previous training over time are starting to wear off and you need to do a few more levels today to boost yourself into the net positive range. So again, that's one more way to track your progress. Am I doing enough training today to at least stay level or even better improve? And Brain EQ is a great way to track your progress against that. Stephanie, should I kick it back to you? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much, Henry, for uh, taking the time to talk about Brain AQ. It's a great way to measure how you've improved over time. And like you said, it can be used for goal setting if you wanted to uh, get back to a high point, maybe if you're returning back to Brain HQ after a break. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and head on over to the percentile section of our progress page. And so uh, this percentiles are gonna be an interesting metric. Now, percentiles aren't gonna be for everyone, but some people are maybe a little competitive or you wanna see how you compare to other people. And so that's what percentiles are gonna be good for. So your percentile score shows you how your performance compares to other people using Brain HQ, And those rankings are gonna be age adjusted unless otherwise noted on the site. So the way that percentiles work is each time you complete a level, Brain HQ is going to make a very precise calculation of how you did relative to everybody else your age who also completed that level. Now, these scores aren't like letter grades in school. Uh, to put it another way, if your percentile score is 50, then that doesn't mean that you are failing at Brain HQ. It means that you're scoring equal to or better than 50% of users who have completed that level. So the percentile calculation is related to star rating calculation, but it's a little bit different. So when you're training with Brain HQ and you earn stars on levels, those stars are awarded based off of your peak performance or the high score that you get in the middle of your training. Now, uh, that means if you get a high score in the middle of a level and then get a couple of questions wrong towards the end, you're still going to be awarded the full five stars because that was your peak performance. Now, percentiles work a little bit differently. Percentile scores reflect your average performance across all of the trials in a level. And so as a result, uh, this information can be a little bit more detailed. So this can also mean that you can have five stars on the level, but maybe your percentile isn't in the top 10% of users, for example. So we can see here on this progress page that Henry is scoring in the 77th percentile. So that means if you took Henry and 98 other Brain HQ users that are 52 years old, uh, which is how old Henry is, uh, then his performance is going to be higher than 76 of them and then lower than 22 of them. So you can see this number here up here uh, at the top of the page. You can see it in the middle of this color wheel. And you can also see it over here on this left side uh, in the percentile overview section. His overall percentile averages out to 77 percentile points. Now, below that, we also see uh, there is a breakout of all of uh, the average percentiles across each cognitive domain. So we can see that uh, Henry has uh, the highest uh, percentile ranking in navigation and uh, has made the most gains in people skills, for example. 
Now, the way that we know that he's made these gains is this number over here after the plus sign. So this, the number after the plus sign tells you how many percentile ranks you've improved over your baseline scores. So that means on average, across all attention exercises, Henry has improved 21 percentile ranks since he first set his original scores. Now, over here on the uh, right side of the page, we have this beautiful color wheel. And this is going to be really, really uh, a great tool to dr drill down even further if you want to uh, work on improving your percentiles. So the inside track is going to show you the same information as the percentile overview section. So you're going to see your average percentile for attention, brain speed, memory, so on and so forth. Now, the outside track is going to show you a breakdown of your average percentile across specific exercises. So, for example, Henry is scoring uh, in the 77th percentile for double decision, the 53rd percentile for freeze frame, the 82nd percentile for target tracker, so on and so forth. So the darker the color of the wedge, the higher your average percentile ranking is going to be. So you can use this color wheel to guide your training if you're interested in bringing your percentile scores up. So what you can do is find a wedge that's maybe a little bit lighter in color. For example, let's click on freeze frame. And then what Brain HQ will do is it'll actually, it'll drop you into a level that it wants you to improve your scores on. Now, the other thing that you can do, which is kind of fun, is if you uh, want to see how you, your scores compare to other BrainHQ users from different age groups. So, for example, you know, we know that Henry, among 52-year-olds who use BrainHQ, is scoring at the 77th percentile, but we can actually slide this over. And we see that if we compare him to 90 year olds, for example, he's scoring in the 91st percentile. Uh, the inverse is also something that you might want to be that you might want to see for fun. And, you know, for example, for somebody age 20, he would be scored in the 70th percentile, which is still pretty good. Um, so uh, that is probably going to wrap it up for our percentile overview. Um, and I want to go ahead and actually switch over to our live section because we've been talking for about 20 minutes now. Um, all right. So let's go ahead. Henry and I are going to start fielding some questions that we can answer live. And Stephanie, there are a ton of great questions coming yeah. in. Now, we're probably going to try and focus the, on the ones that are most about progress, mm -hmm. um, but we will um, we will get to as many as we can. And, you know, Stephanie, we were just talking about percentile. So, you know, here's a question that I see right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Or uh, one of the, someone on the webinar is saying, hey, my percentile doesn't change that much. You know, it's kind of around 80th percentile most of the time. Mm -hmm. When I, when, I, when I was in school, I'm used to getting high 90s. Sounds like this, uh, this person was an A student. So congratulations. You know, how does previous performance, uh, you know, presumably about school relate to, uh, to Brain HQ performance? Um, you want me to say a few words or do you want yeah, to? Yeah, I would, I would say, uh, go ahead and uh, take a shake at that one. Yeah, sure. So, you know, first of all, it's probably not a very good idea. Well, let me put this differently. Percentiles in Brain HQ, although they are scored from zero to 100, kind of like a school test you might have taken, they're nonetheless really, really different. You know, there's a lot of uh, users we have in Brain HQ that were straight A students, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a 95th percentile on a memory score or an attention score. They're just, they're just very, very different. And in fact, you know, if you're getting at the 50th percentile in Brain HQ, that actually means you're average for your age group. Um, and that's pretty good if you're holding up for your age group. I would never want anyone to get a 50th percentile in Brain HQ and think, wow, that sounds like when I was in middle school, that would have been an F, right? A 50th percentile in Brain HQ is absolutely not an F. So I, I hope I can, I hope I can clear that up. Uh, what a 50th percentile means in Brain HQ is, hey, you're better than half the people out there, which is, you know, a pretty good place to be as far as brain health is concerned. Um, but the other question that, uh, that that was part of this was, uh, hey, my percentiles don't change too much. Is that is that normal? And actually, that's not too surprising. You know, if you get 80th percentile uh, on the first level, let's say of target tracker, like Stephanie was showing, and then you go on to the second and the third and the fourth level, well, you might actually stay around 80th percentile because, you know, you were better than 80% of the people who did the first level. You might also be better than 80% of the people who did the fourth level or the 10th level. That 
doesn't mean you're not improving your brain health. It just means that you're staying at about the same rank compared to other people who are going through brain, a, uh, brain HQ. To keep track on your progress, you know, what I would suggest is that you do what Stephanie did, which was, hey, drill down into that exercise you're working on, see what medals you're earning, and then take a look at those graphs to see, uh, see your performance improving on each level. That's really the truest and the most accurate way to measure progress, which is to say, hey, are you getting better at these exercises? The percentiles are a more rough measure that are going to give you that compared to other people. But what you should really care about is, hey, how am I improving compared to when I started Brain HQ? So great question. Thank you. Yeah. And I think even to take it a step further, um, I know the question asker had said that, you know, their percentiles were kind of stagnant in that way. Uh, I actually want to talk about uh, pretty, uh, not totally uncommon cases where actually percentiles can fluctuate quite quickly. And that happens most often, typically with new users to Brain HQ. And so when you're new to Brain HQ, each level you complete when you're first starting out, can seemingly have a pretty big impact on your percentile. Um, so, you know, you can score really high on one exercise, score maybe not so well on a second exercise, and then it's gonna average those together. So that's gonna create a lot of fluctuation when you were first starting. But what's happening is that as you advance through those levels and you continue your training, you yourself are becoming a more and more elite brain trainer, and you're actually being compared to a more and more elite group of brain trainers, because not everybody's going to move on past the first or second level. You're now having to be uh, graded against or compared to other people that have completed those later levels. So if you see your percentile score drop, especially if you're kind of a newer user, that's okay, and that's actually kind of expected and anticipated. Uh, we want you to do new levels and train more. Um, so in those cases where you do see your score may be decreasing, it doesn't mean that you're getting worse at training with Brain HQ. It just means that you're expanding into new training levels that are going to be more challenging for you, which is we, what we want in order to drive that plasticity. That's a great point. That's a great point, Stephanie. We want people to train and, um, and uh, those are the right measures to show it. Uh, I see a couple of great questions about brain AQ here. Sure. And, uh, maybe I will field these. Uh, someone asks us, um, hey, so is brain AQ linked to effort across time primarily rather than performance per se? And that is a very insightful question. So thanks for asking it. You know, brain AQ really does incorporate kind of two aspects of things. One of them, as you say, is effort. Simply by trying a new level uh, of an exercise, uh, whether it's in the personal trainer or whether you're picking the exercise on its own, but simply doing that level for the first time and establishing your performance on that level, no matter where your performance is, that earns you brain AQ points because Brain HQ knows that you've done the level and knows that you scored better than zero on it. So you absolutely earn Brain AQ points just by starting out new levels. And the reason we do that is, well, as Stephanie just mentioned, we want people to start new levels. That's kind of what brain training is all about. Starting new levels is good for your brain health. The other way you earn Brain AQ points is by um, you know, a measure of your performance on every level. And uh, the first time you do a level, of course, you have a certain performance. But if you go back and do that level again, you will actually earn more Brain AQ points. And it actually is OK. You'll earn more Brain AQ points if you go back and improve your score. But if you go back and you match your score, or even if you go back and don't score quite as high as you did the first time, like Stephanie showed you that I did on that level on Target Tracker. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> we all have good days and bad days. Yeah. That's how it is you will still earn brain AQ points um, by repeating the level. And the reason for that is of course, that while well, simply repeating the level is good for your brain uh, health. By practicing it, you're improving the wiring and the connection strength and everything in your brain. And that's why brain AQ is really a good synthetic overall measure of progress. It gives you points as you expand what you're doing in new levels and gives you points as you repeat old levels and, um, and come back and strengthen your brain. So that was exactly what it was designed to do. Yeah, I think that was a very uh, helpful and insightful answer. Um, I want to actually take uh, this question from Edward. Uh, he's asking about how many levels in Brain HQ there are in total, because we can see from here that you have uh, almost 1,700 levels complete in Brain HQ. Does that mean that there are 1,700 individual levels? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, you can train with levels as many times as you want, and every time you train with a level, that gets counted here. So this level's complete total is actually cumulative. 
Um, but there are, as you can see here, 776 unique levels in Brain HQ. And you can see of all of those levels that you've completed, uh, what categories you've been doing typically those scorings in. Um, if you want to get real nitpicky and dig down even further, you can also see using this map over here, uh, how many times you've completed each specific level. The darker the color, uh, the more times you've completed a level. So yeah. for example, uh, Henry has completed this first level of eye for detail 20 times. And so it's a very, very dark <laughs> color. Whereas, you know, uh, up here, he's completed this level in stage six only once. And so it's lighter in color. Um, That's so exactly great question. Right. And we give that feedback because like I said, you know, brain HQ and brain training is about practice. So going back to repeat those levels is a good idea. Now the personal trainer automatically brings you back to levels to repeat that it thinks you can improve on. Or if you're picking out exercises you're on your own, using the tools that Stephanie showed you, the metals and the graphs can help you go back and figure out, hey, which level should I work on some more? Great answer. Yeah, um, I wanna take another uh, question from Paul. Uh, he just wanted clarification that percentile scores aren't tied to frequency of use like brain AQ. Uh, that is correct. Uh, so AQ is your activity quotient. Uh, so it's gonna be, um, you know, it's going to increase when you uh, train with brain HQ. It, whereas percentile is taking the scores that you've already earned and then comparing those to other brain HQ users. So that's not going to, um, that's not going to change with the frequency um, of use necessarily. That's exactly right. And, um, you know, Stephanie, that actually brings us into a next question that I think we should take from Treyer. And uh, they say it's a burning question, Stephanie. So oh. I feel like we should definitely answer it. Okay, sure. Uh, Treyer says, um, hey, a few months ago, I lost a percentile and then another after working really hard to get to 86th percentile. This is maddening because I can't get back to 86. Now, I totally, totally get that concern. You know, sometimes your percentiles can go down as Stephanie indicated. And you know, why would your percentile go down? Well, you tried a new level and the new level was harder than the last level you did. And so your percentile can go down. And I totally hear you, Treyer, that, that can be very frustrating. You know, here's what I would suggest. Um, if you were taking a new class, you know, let's say you were in school and you were taking a class and doesn't matter what, French or calculus or history, you know, maybe the first day you take a test and you get 95 on it and you feel like I'm a great student at this. I just got a 95 on my first test. But then, you know, some more materials introduced and you take a next test and maybe the next time you get an 86 on the test. That doesn't mean you're worse at history. And I certainly would never want you to think you should stop taking the history class just because you got a B on a test instead of an A. You're absolutely learned more along the way. Brain HQ percentiles are exactly the same way. As Stephanie mentioned, they can be a little fragile, right? Sometimes you might score very well on the first one and then not so well on the second one, but we still want you to do that second one. Doing that second one is good for your brain, uh, even though you saw your percentile go down a bit. So if you're a little bit discouraged, and I totally get it yeah. about that decrease in percentiles. What I really recommend that you do is focus your attention on that brain AQ measure because you will absolutely see that going up as you're doing training. And it's a very valid way of looking at, hey, how much uh, brain HQ training has improved your overall reserve or drill down to those individual graphs that Stephanie was showing you on the exercise level, because on those you will see, I'm sure that your, um, hey, your performance on those levels is going up. You are improving your brain function, your brain performance. It's just that your percentile has gone down because it's a harder level compared to other people. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, I really don't want anyone to see a percentile score go down and get discouraged. I would never want anyone to think I got 95th percentile in brain HQ and I never want to train again because I'm, you know, I'm worried that my score will go down. That's not what we want for people to use brain HQ. We want you to keep training, keep opening up new levels, keep repeating old levels, see your brain AQ score up and see those metals and those graphs on the exercises go up. But yeah. thanks for the question, Treyer. It's a wonderful question. Yeah. And Treyer, what I would also say just as a little bit of a, a coaching moment is, um, you know, there are going to be good training days and bad training days, and you shouldn't measure your progress by one number solely, which is why we offer so many different metrics in Brain HQ. So, I mean, you're scoring, I believe you said at the 70 or no, at the 86th percentile for somebody who's age 79, which is incredible. Um, so I don't want you to beat yourself up over that if you lose a point here and there, because uh, it's it sounds like you're still making a lot of progress and you're overall still doing very, very well. Yep. Great question. 
Uh, I see a few more good ones, Stephanie, but do you want to pick one out or should I? Take yeah, it so I actually have uh, an interesting question that came in from Stephen, who wants to talk about the different ways BrainHQ talks about levels, which is uh, something that we've actually talked about quite a bit internally. Um, so when we talk about levels, there are sort of two different things that we talk about. So, uh, for example, when we go back to target tracker in the level selection screen, each of these squares here or each of these tiles represents a level of target tracker. But uh, if we go to the personal trainer, for example, um, we're going to see under each of these uh, 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 each of these exercises, for example, uh, Henry's working on the 34th level. So how do we sort of reconcile that? Like, what's the matchup there? Um, and there is a, um, I want to say that I've actually talked about this with uh, our product development team before. And as I understand it, and Henry, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah you could go for it, but I'll have to <laughs> sure. swing at it. Um, but as I understand it, uh, the, for example, the 34th level of visual sweeps, that's going to be the 34th level specific to Henry and his personal trainer. Um, so the personal trainer, when it's picking out levels, is taking a look at all of your previous uh, training that you've done before, all of your previous progress, and then putting together a schedule specifically for your brain's needs. Um, and so when we see something like the 34th level, that's gonna be a 34th level of visual sleep that is unique to Henry. So yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be like stage six level two every single time if you see what's the 34th level of visual sleeps on your own personal trainer. Um, but it's sort of a way for you to gauge uh, how far along you've come from the first level that you did uh, with that particular exercise. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly right. If you wanna to go to visual sweeps for a minute in yeah. the visual exercise, you know, you can see uh, that I've, first of all, done quite a lot of visual sweeps. <laughs> I like the exercise quite well. But if you start at the top there for a minute, you know, let's pretend I was just starting here, Stephanie, and I was only using the personal trainer. I would do that first level, which is the one in the upper left, and the personal trainer would say, that's my first level. And then once I was done with that, the personal trainer would say, well, here's your second level. And it would give me the one to the right there. Now, because in personal trainer, we do them in order, it just calls it the second level. But here, they're laid out in a little bit more of a, a graphical format. So here, when we see it, we would say, okay, that's the first stage, and it's the, you know, the top row and the rightmost column. So we just give you a little bit more detail when you're looking at it at the individual exercise level. Whereas again, in the personal trainer, because you go through them sequentially, you know, we just kind of count them as you go. Yeah, exactly. Great question. Hope that's helpful. All right. Uh, let's see, there are tons of great questions going in. So let's take a look at a, a few other ones. Um, here's one from Becky. Uh, she asks, hey, percentiles are based on a number of users, but how many participants are used to calculate the numbers? And, and that's a great question. The short answer, Becky, is, well, we actually use everyone who's done the entire level. Um, and uh, Stephanie, if you can go back to that uh, exercise page for just a moment, let's take a look at those tiles. So when you compare yourself on percentiles, like I said, we're comparing you to everyone who's ever done the level, but there's one thing to be aware of here. So for example, let's say we're looking at the percentile for the very first level there, stage one, leftmost uh, column, top row. You know, a lot of people, have done the first stage of visual sweeps. And so, you know, in there you might literally be, you know, we might be calculating the percentile off of, you know, quite literally hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of users. On the other hand, Stephanie, if you don't mind scrolling all the way down to the bottom, when we calculate your percentile for stage seven and the very last level there, which you see that I did out of curiosity one day, <laughs> Um, you know, there, hey, those, you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of people who did the first level of visual sweeps, well, not all of them made it to stage seven, the last level there. So we might be comparing your performance to a fewer number of people there. And that's actually relevant because as Stephanie said, those people who got to the last stage and the last level, that's a pretty elite group of brain trainers. And you might have fantastic performance on visual sweeps, but in that very elite group of brain trainers, that still might be only better than half of them because it's people who made it that far. And that's one of the things that's just a little bit funny about percentiles to be aware of when you get to these very high levels of performance. Um, so great question, Becky, thanks. Yeah, great question. Um, all right, so I'm scanning through and we have a lot of great questions. It's hard to sort of cherry pick them. <laughs> um, 
All right, so Phyllis is asking, I'm in my 90s and in the 60th percentile, am I being compared to other 90 year olds? Uh, by default, yes. So when you go to your progress page and then you look at percentiles, if this number up here is uh, showing that you are at the 60th percentile, then that means you're at the 60th percentile compared to all other 90 year olds who use BrainHQ. Uh, if you wanna see how that changes, uh, depending on, um, different age or how your scores vary from age group to age group, you can actually uh, click and drag this little slider around and then see how your percentile changes uh, for various age groups. Uh, so thank you for the question, Phyllis. Yep. Uh, you know, Stephanie, we have a couple of questions from people who are using Brain HQ on their mobile device, mm. like their um, their iPad or their iPhone, iPhone or maybe sure. an Android phone. Do you want to say a few words about which of these things you can see on your mobile device and which of them are at this time only available on the web? Because I, I don't yeah. want anyone to be thinking, wait a minute, why can't I see what Stephanie's showing me? Yeah, here? absolutely. Uh, so the uh, interface for the uh, Brain HQ apps, whether you're on an iPad or an iPhone, or on an Android tablet or phone um, is going to be a little bit different than the website. So if you wanted to see your individual uh, level performance, so by going to uh, the exercises and then uh, you could see an array that looks like this. So you're going to see uh, these little graphs with, these, with the star counts and uh, your baseline and best scores for each of those levels. Now, one of the things that isn't uh, in the Brain HQ apps at this time is a progress uh, a, a progress page. So there is some progress that is measured. We have uh, progress tiles and um, we have, uh, like I said, those uh, level tiles that you can view. But the progress page here with your AQ, stars are in levels complete and percentile is only gonna be available on the website at this time. So if you're on mobile and you wanna check that out, you can still go to brainhq.com on your mobile device and load up that page to take a look. Um, but that is one of the main differences between the uh, the app version of Brain HQ and the web version. Yep, that's that's exactly right. Great question. Uh, hey, Stephanie, here's uh, Ron saying, um, "Hey, just wants to make sure he's being clear, or sure. we're being clear. Is it correct to say that higher levels are more difficult, and does the same apply to stages?" So why don't we go back to one of those exercise pages and yeah. uh, and talk about this? Why don't we start with um, yeah, target tracker is a great example. So, uh, you know, would you generally say that the uh, higher stages are more, uh, well, maybe I should, I don't mean to put it to you. I think it, <laughs> it is generally true. Let's pick an example of each because it is a great question. Yeah, so let's so, let's take a look at like the first level of target tracker and then the perfect. final level of target tracker just so we exactly. can compare them. Um, so this is going to be our first level of target tracker. And like I said, there's going to be a bright blue ball that appears and then those are going to start moving around. And you know, they're moving kind of slowly. There's high contrast here, so it's easier to keep your eye on those objects. And they're kind of staying towards the center of the screen. And so your brain isn't having to work so far to process that information way out in your periphery. Um, so what's gonna happen is over time, uh, let's go check out a later level of uh, target tracker. So if we go to the most advanced level of target tracker, uh, it's gonna look a lot different. So we have, instead of a dark blue background, we have an image of a coral reef. And instead of uh, light blue balls, we have these light blue jellies that are semi-transparent. They're moving around a lot faster and they are way out on the periphery of the screen. Um, so in general, I would say that yes, as you progress through Brain HQ, those levels are gonna get more difficult and more challenging, um, but that is by design. Uh, if the exercises and the levels aren't uh, being particularly challenging for you, then you're maybe not getting as much benefit from training with those easy levels as you would with something that you are maybe getting a little bit of resistance on. Yeah, so this is a great example where in general, you know, on average, the levels do get more challenging, but I do wanna be careful about what we mean by that. Yeah. So what I mean by that is that, and you'll see this in my score, on that first level, you can see that I got as good as six objects at some point. So because they're bright objects and of sharp contrast and they don't move that fast, I can track a lot of objects. Now it's harder as you get to that last level. I don't even think I've tried it yet, but yep. you can see in this stage in general, I'm not tracking six objects at my best. Sometimes I'm tracking four. Now, um, so that in, essentially means that the level is harder. I'm not able to perform as well, but it's good to practice even though it's harder because I'm obviously challenging my brain and driving it in new directions. Now, that being said, Stephanie, let's take a quick look at visual sweeps if you don't mind. 
for. Uh, Visual then, sweeps is an exercise where, you know, the levels are different, but I don't know if I would necessarily say they're harder. Yeah. Like for example, uh, if you click on that first one, great, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to have uh, these broad lines on a, a green square, and uh, the point of visual sweeps is that there you have to see if the sweeps move in or in or sorry move in or contract or move out and expand. Um, and so, in I think Henry actually has a very very good point. The, the way that the first level differs differs from the last level of visual sweeps is not all too different. Uh, and again, it looks like out of curiosity you went ahead and did that last level of visual <laughs> sweeps. Um, yeah. But my guess is that it's going to be another shape with more bars. It's just the bars are slightly different in uh, yeah. in a different orientation, and uh, the the width of those bars is different. That's right. So I wouldn't say it's harder. It's a different color. It's mm -hmm. a different orientation. So in this sense, we're just trying to go through all the colors and the orientations. Yep. So that's yeah, a that great was a question, yeah great question and a great example, Henry. Yep. Um, uh, anonymous super. wants to know where I can find the progress page. Well, anonymous, I've got the answer for you. Uh, so when you log into Brain HQ, up in the top middle of your screen, next to this training option, is going to be a progress option that you can click on. Uh, and again, you can switch between uh, your Brain AQ and see how many days you've trained. We have how many stars you've earned, how many levels you've completed, and then finally over here we have your percentile section. That's right. And I'll just remind everyone that you'll see that if you're on the web, but anonymous, if you're training on a mobile device, you're not going to see that. Um, and you can log into the web to check it. Yep. And uh, for even another point of clarification, you can be on mobile and go to brainhq.com in your mobile browser and see that as well. Yep. So uh, here's a good one from Lorna, who's following up on the discussion of Brain AQ. Um, Lorna, looks like you looked at my score very carefully and you saw that I had improved 387 points. So mm. very sharp eyes. First of all, congratulations. And I think the question is, hey, what does the 387 represent? And, and Lorna, the best way to think about it is it's like points. And what I mean by that is it's not a direct measure of your performance. And certainly, you know, we're not looking inside your brain. We don't know anything kind of magical or, or about your brain. So think of it as points. And you earn points um, when you do the things that improve your brain function. You earn points when you try a new level and you just establish your score for the first time. And you also earn points when you go back to a level you've done before and you do it again. Now you earn more points if your performance is higher and you earn fewer points if your performance is lower, but either way you're adding points. And in that sense, the points uh, really are, are meant to reflect, well, how much benefit is your brain getting out of Brain HQ? How much are you adding to your brain and cognitive reserve over time? Uh, and so I think the way to think about this graph is, um, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about whether you earn 300 points or 100 points. What I would look at is, hey, is it generally going up because I'm training regularly? Or if I took a break, how much training do I need to keep doing in order to get it back up to where I was before? Your goal should be to uh, be improving this or maintaining it at all times. Great question. Yeah. Uh, and great answer, Henry. Um, so Bernadette actually has a question that is interesting. Um, if you're scoring well in one category and then are maybe not scoring so well in a different category, uh, which category do you recommend spending more time on? Um, just as sort of a coaching question. Um, so my, my take on that is you want to go ahead and uh, work on the thing that are going to keep you coming back to Brain HQ and doing training. So if you, it, it's very important, don't get me wrong, to uh, train with new levels and especially those levels that are difficult because that's where you're going to see the most improvement over time typically. But it's um, also important to have fun with this training because we don't want you to get discouraged. If you're, you know, hitting your head against a wall trying to do True North, for example, uh, maybe it's okay to take a break from True North for a little bit, do some other exercises that you're familiar with, uh, and then come back to True North uh, once, uh, once you've cooled off a little bit. Um, so it's really going to be up to you and your particular style of training, but I would say do your best to not get discouraged by um, exercises where you're having a difficult time. Now, the other thing you could do is you can reach out to me or any of our other support team members, and we all have tips and tricks that we use for each of these exercises pretty much. So we're also happy to share that information with you if you're having difficulty with any of these exercises. Um, Henry, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? 
Yeah, I'll just build on. I mean, your answer is exactly right, Stephanie. But I would say, hey, there are some people who um, uh, want to build on their strengths and take an exercise they're pretty good at and, you know, move from three or four stars to four or five stars, just really sharpen their performance in that. And that's great. It's good to build on your strengths. And there are other people who look at it and say, I don't want to be one star in anything. If I'm one star in an exercise, I want to work on it until I, you know, at least get to two stars or three stars. Those are actually both pretty good approaches to brain training. Um, and I, like Stephanie said, uh, you know, I'd encourage you to find the one that's the most motivating for you. Some people like to see uh, their exercise. They like to see, I got a gold medal uh, on these. Other people like to go and see, hey, I got at least a bronze medal on all the stages. And that means I'm working hard. Those are both great. What we wouldn't want you to do is just stop doing brain training because you got discouraged by it. So find the one that works for you. Uh, hey, Stephanie, here's a good question from Nadia. Uh -huh. She asks, um, hey, is it okay to go back and do exercises when you didn't get all the stars? So let's go back to one of those exercises pages for a moment. Yeah, People absolutely. Really like. um, so that's actually a question that I was also eyeing too. So uh, <laughs> let's um, let's go to Target Tracker because we know that you haven't earned all of the stars in some of these later stages. We do know that, Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to keep bragging on you a again. little bit there. <laughs> yeah. So Stephanie, let's say I was going to do some more some brain training after this webinar. What would mm -hmm. you uh, What would you recommend I do here on Target Tracker? Yeah. So I would say it really kind of depends on how, what you're feeling like you want to work on, Henry. So yep. if you are motivated by uh, medals in Brain HQ. So if you want to uh, make sure that you are uh, increasing your uh, depth of progress on each of these levels, then medals are going to be the way to do that. So I would say you could go up to level or stage five and then try and turn that bronze into a silver or go back up to stage four and then try and turn that silver into a gold. Yep. Now, if you are looking for a wider breadth of exercises to, or, or, or yeah, exercises to work on, then what you might want to do is um, come to stage six or seven and then finish up these last three levels. So that way you can uh, potentially earn your first medal there. And then, you know, finish up these last four levels on stage seven and you can get a medal there as well. Yeah. So Nadia, I think the answer to your question is absolutely. You should go back and do exercises where you didn't get all the stars. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, let's just pick one in stage five there. On the upper right, I see I've got three stars. Mm -hmm. but, you know, frankly, Stephanie, I kind of think of myself as a four-star person. <laughs> so, you know, I'm tempted to go back to that and just try it, frankly, two or three or four or five times a day and see if I can make it to four stars. Yeah. You know, to me, that's to me, that's very motivating. So I definitely encourage people to go back to exercises. Now, Nadia, you did say get all the stars. Hey, not everyone is going to be able to reach five stars on every level. Now, I do have friends here at Posit Science, and I'll leave them anonymously, where they're only satisfied if they get five stars. But, you know, good for them. That's not necessarily for everyone. I think it's important to, as you do Brain HQ, sort of, hey, get comfortable with what kind of person you are. Do you want to try and get to three stars on every level? Maybe you want to shoot for four stars on every level. But whatever feels right for you as you're doing Brain HQ, Nadia, it's a great question. You should come back and try and hit that target for stars that you have. Yeah, so great question. Uh, here's also a really interesting one I think we should take, uh, Stephanie. This is from Judy. Uh -huh. She says, I have an account as a person in a group of users in Brain HQ for my doctor's office, but I'm going to be getting my own individual non-group account soon. And Judy asks, hey, will I lose all the progress information that I have with the group account? That's a great question. Um, so first of all, I'm glad you're working with your, your doctor with Brain HQ. That's a, that's a great thing to do. And I'm glad to hear you're going to be continuing Brain HQ on your own. Yeah. So uh, the short answer is yes, you should retain all of your progress information. Uh, we should make sure that happens correctly. You know, what should happen is that the doctor basically um, uh, releases your account from their group account and you just keep training with it exactly like you have been before. Yep. But if for any reason that's not the way your doctor wants to set it up, you just give us a call, give Stephanie and her whole team a call or send us an email, and we'll work with you and your doctor to make sure that progress information gets transferred over correctly. We certainly want all the hard work you've done under your doctor's supervision to you know, give you the right uh, point to launch off for and keep doing Brain HQ on your own. Great question about progress. Yeah, and a uh, great answer. Um, I think that actually answered it fully. I thought I had something to add, but I don't think I do anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, you know, here's a good one from Sue on a different topic, but a super mm -hmm. interesting one. Uh, you know, Sue says, Hey, sometimes I get a lot of stars when I think I've done poorly on an exercise. And sometimes when I think I've done well, I only get two stars. 
Do the star levels vary according to exercise? Um, that's, there's a there, uh, there's that's there's some crunchy math that goes with <laughs> assigning star yeah, values. Uh, you know what I would say, Sue, is um, hey, stars do reflect. Um, you know, they're a little bit like percentiles. They mm -hmm. do reflect generally where you sit compared to other people who've done that exact level. Now, percentiles, as, as Stephanie indicated, are quite a bit more detailed in their calculation, but it's true that stars generally reflect where you sit compared to other people. And so if you're getting a lot of stars when you think you did poorly on an exercise, it means, hey, a little bit to your surprise, even though you didn't think you did that well compared to yourself, you still did better than a lot of other people who did that level, so yeah. good for you. Now, you know, still probably room to improve for you. You can build on your strength. But, you know, that's why you got a lot of stars. Even though it was easy for you, it was hard for a lot of other people. And then similarly, hey, you might think you've done really well, you know, um, but then you find out you only got two stars. Find out, hey, this is an exercise that, you know, other people, you know, find a little bit easier, or maybe I should put it that you find it more challenging than other people. And hey, that's okay. Everyone's brain is unique and different. Everyone's got their own patterns of, you know, strengths and opportunities and so forth. And then, you know, as we talked a little bit about before, you know, a little bit up to you how to pursue that. You might, you know, get those two stars and you might say, well, that's a challenge to me. I want to at least get to three stars on that level to be as good as the average person. And then, you know, keep practicing on that level and the levels around it. And you're probably going to improve your performance to three stars. And that can be very rewarding. On the other hand, again, you might want to build on your strengths. You know, you got, uh, you found it very challenging, but you still got four stars. Well, hey, that's a strength for you. Double down and see if you can get the five stars on that. Those are both good choices about how to how to pursue brain training in um, in these individual exercises. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the only thing that I think I would add to that is if you are uh, mathematically inclined and want to actually get down into the nitty gritty of how stars are calculated, we do actually in our uh, support site have an article about how stars are calculated. So the way that you would navigate to that is to click the help button up at the top of the page. And then down here in the progress section, uh, we have uh, buh, 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 how many stars have I earned? And then at the bottom of this article, we have how Brain HQ calculates stars. Um, so it has to do with standard deviations. If you understand statistics, then this might be the little bit of wow. a section of an article for you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, speaking of kind of math and so forth, and I know we're going to wrap up. So maybe we should each take one more question. Does that mm -hmm. sound like a good idea, Stephanie? Oh, sure. Super. You might need to. Uh, well, we can probably just speak to it, um, yeah. but maybe you can log back in as me really quickly. Is that yeah? Easy? Let me uh, let me go ahead and do that. Hang on just a second here. I want to take this question from Rebecca. This is a, a super interesting one. Hey, I don't relate very well to the metals and the stars that are used in Brain HQ. Is there a way to see what percentage of improvement has occurred on an individual exercise or overall? And hey, I get that, you know, some people prefer some methods of tracking their progress and some others. And so if you're that kind of person, the stars, they're not for you, the medals, hey man, you know, I'm not an Olympian, just show me how much better am I got. You know, I would go back to that tool that Stephanie showed you. So let's go back to, um, you know, Target Tracker one more time, Stephanie, if you don't sure. mind. So, you know, Rebecca, if uh, I totally get where you're coming from, and what I would suggest is, hey, these, we built these graphs for you. <laughs> so uh, let's take stage two there, for example, and you can see that very first level. The first time I did that level, you know, I got three objects tracked, which is not bad, but clearly I wanted to do better. And you can see that, you know, I kept working and I did this many times, which is why we're seeing this graph here. And my best is now six. Now, to be very fair to your question, it doesn't show you the percentage exactly, but I think this will get to what you're after, which is, hey, just show me the data. How much have I improved at this? So you can see that on this first level of stage two, I've actually doubled my performance. I've gone from tracking three objects to six objects. And if you look at the middle one, for example, where I started at five and I've grown to six, you know, you can see my improvement has improved by, you know, one entire object, so to speak. And you can see this kind of data for every single Brain HQ exercise at this level of detail. And uh, I'm glad you asked the question because this is why we built these graphs. So thank you. Yeah, exactly. Stephanie, um, do you want to pick one last question to wrap up on? Yeah, um, let's see. Do you have a recommendation for one that you want to pick or should I go ahead and quickly scroll, scroll through? Uh, let's see, uh, why don't we do, um, oh, there's really so many good questions here. I let's know. see, uh, here's one, wait, um, where did it go? I was just looking at this. 
Oh, but now it's escaped me. All right, well, let's just pick one of these. They're all so excellent. Yeah. Try and pick one that's about um, about progress in particular, because we're getting so many uh, so many questions. Um, let's see. How about uh, okay? Well, let's pick this one because I can see it. Uh, sure. Pam asks, "Hey, on the percentile color graph, mm -hmm. how do you know what task or activity in each small section it represents?" Oh, now, Stephanie, yeah. I think that this is something that Zoom isn't helping us with, so you might probably have to not. Um, yeah. So uh, what's going to happen is as I hover over these different sections of this wheel there's uh, some text that's going to appear up here. And actually what I can go ahead and do is zoom in a little bit to make that a little bit bigger. But as I move my cursor around these different wedges, we can see that information changes. So like this uh, wedge is for freeze frame, target tracker, mixed signals, uh, so on and so forth there. So uh, that information is gonna be up here. And that information is not visible until you actually hover over one of those wedges for the first time. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, we had a, a ton of great questions um, and we are at our full hour. And I know that we have lots of people working with us who are pretty busy, so we should wrap up. And um, I want to thank everyone for these wonderful questions about progress. And we got to as many as we could. Uh, if we didn't answer your exact question, I hope we answered something adjacent to it and spoke to you. Uh, but if we didn't answer your question at all, please, hey, send us a note at support at brainhq.com or click on help there in the upper left. And um, hey, Stephanie and her team are uh, delighted to follow up with you. These are great questions and we certainly want to answer all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, just a couple of the takeaways uh, for the different kinds of progress that we talked about. Um, you know, percentiles are going to be a way for you to compare your scores to other Brain HQ users. But if that's not your drive and you want to see how much you've improved over time, Brain AQ may be a better metric for that. There's also level tiles and medals if you are uh, interested in doing a wide variety of exercises and making sure that you are uh, digging deep on those exercises and improving your scores. Um, as for other webinars in this series, uh, we are planning, like I said, on having another office hours webinar uh, in May. So we have not announced a date or a topic for that one just yet. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, and in about three weeks, we are going to be having a webinar that Henry's running about humor and the brain as part of our Brain, brain Academy series. Uh, so if you are interested in attending that, uh, we will be sending out an email invitation to uh, everyone to join those shortly. All right, other than that, I think we are good to go. Um, Henry, do you have any closing words? Uh, no, thanks everyone for coming. And Stephanie, you're a fantastic co-host. It was very fun to do this together. Yeah, uh, let's uh, do it again. <laughs> let's do it again sometime. Thanks All right, everyone. Have a, good one. Uh, have a good day, everybody. All right, happy brain training.